Well, good morning. Here we are in Burley and Wharfdale. Got a really interesting job today. It's a listed building. It's an old corn mill, actually, and uh, it's been put on the market for sale and the owner wants it tidying up so it gives a good first impression to potential buyers. There's some different terraced areas, some steps. There's also a small courtyard and then another area to the top of the car park. Being an old corn mill, however, there are some significant environmental challenges here because it's located on a beck there's an old mill pond at the top there, and I'm gonna to have to be very careful about the runoff situation in terms of using chemicals and so on. Let's have a quick look around, see what we're up against. So upstream, we've got the mill pond. Uh, water would have been held here and then released downstream as needed to power the water wheels. Popular spot with uh, ducks and moorhens. First challenge, we've got a skip that hasn't been collected yet, so... Um, I'm going to have to uh, make two visits, come back and finish this area once the skip's being moved. It's a very early resin bonded surface. As we walk down, we've got some Indian sandstone steps. Multicoloured, so they'll clean up really nicely. So the problem here is going to be drainage. Uh, we've got one of the old uh, grinding wheels here, which has been fashioned into a drain. No idea for sure where that drainage is going, only to say that it probably goes straight into the beck. Down to this level here, we've got some original Yorkshire stone slabs. Very green, very difficult to clean. Down again onto this terraced area. Miniature York stone flags. I haven't seen these before. Dirty, grimy, lots of black lichen, fair bit of moss, dark, dingy corners. Down some more steps to another terrace. Again, we've got more of these millstones that have been inlaid into the terrace as a feature. Uh, probably a bit of a soak away, no knowing where the drainage goes. Absolutely stunning location, beautiful. Got to be careful how we handle this. A lot of the chemicals that we use for cleaning stonework, getting rid of organic staining, black lichen and so on, are uh, caustic and um, really quite harmful to aquatic life. So I can't allow any possibility of the runoff ending up in the beck. The beck itself leads to the river wharf not too far away. It's not the cleanest of rivers to be fair, but it's recently been rehabilitated by otters. So we don't want to risk putting anything in the beck which is going to damage the food chain. So the approach I'm going to take is using hot water and steam where needed uh, to clean the area. It'll still look fantastic, but some of the organic staining will remain, especially the black lichens. Nothing at this stage we can do about that. But what I will do is apply a post-treatment of an eco-safe product that doesn't release any harmful toxins into the environment. So there's a lot to do. Let's get started. Uh, nearly ready to get started. I'm just putting on my wrist splint. I got a, a metacarpal injury last year. Oh, by the way, the metacarpal, it's a ligament that goes across the wrist there and through which the nerves come down your arm and into the hand. And the, the ligament can sometimes get crushed, causes nerve pain in your hands, pins and needles, pain all the way up your arms. Really painful, it can wake you up at night. It's, uh, it can be that extreme. Um, so I wear this wrist splint when I'm working now. Only cost about a tenner from Amazon. I don't notice it once I've got my gloves on. And uh, touch wood, I've had no real trouble since I started using this. Gloves on. Nice day for it, looks like it's gonna brighten up. Bit of fuel in the motor and we'll get going. Right, get the Bluetooth headphones on so I don't miss any phone calls. Switch on. And today's podcast is Empire. It's a series actually, recommended. History. History of Empires.
Hello, can I help you? Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just pop up later. We'll have a look at it for you. Give you a prize. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. All right, thank you. Bye. That's first inquiry of the day. Um, earlier on, I had a phone call from a chap called Will in Harrogate. He's uh, represents an apartment lot with a number of different owners, and I gave them a quote. Oh, last year, uh, I bet it was uh, late August. And uh, just goes to show you, sometimes people need to think about it and get the agreement with others. But they've just confirmed the job this morning. That's quite a big job for me, actually. So, yeah, Bluetooth earphones, recommended. Very often when you're cleaning really dirty resin bond surfaces, you get these tram lines, these parallel lines. The way to get rid of that is to go over the surface again using a figure of eight motion, or maybe even a little sort of donut. Just thought I'd pause uh, a minute there, I've just been taking some photographs of this actually. Uh, just so you can get an impression of the, uh, the before and after. Quite dramatic, eh? Now, unfortunately, now once we've cleaned this off, it transpires what we've got here is Indian sandstone sets. I've never seen these before. I've seen Indian sandstone flags, but not these small tiles. Uh, Unfortunately, there's a lot of black lichen in here, which we're probably not going to do, be able to do much with. Uh, the reason I say that, um, I've done lots of these Indian sandstone patios, and there seems to be two different types of sandstone. One of them is uh, quite rough to the touch. It almost feels like a, like a sandpaper. And the other one is smoother. Um, now, I found with these uh, sandpapery ones, 
the lichen really gets into the surface of the sandstone and it's impossible to clean. Even with concentrated alkaline cleaning agents, the best that you can do is kind of fade veins, uh, not really get rid of them. I've noticed another telltale sign with these is if they've got these almost white stones in them, uh, and often the pink ones as well. That's another indicator of this particular type of stone. I don't know what it is, whether it comes from a different region in India, a different quarry. Maybe it's just taken from a different level of the quarry, higher up or lower down, I'm not sure. Um, but this, uh, this rough to the touch stuff is really difficult to clean. Now, if you want to make sure that you don't get these black lichen infestations, what you need to do is regularly clean it from day one um, and ideally get somebody like myself around, somebody that's a, a professional soft wash technician to apply biocide chemicals which kill the stuff, get an annual treatment, stop this ever getting established and it'll always look great but once it's established and in the rock itself it can be really difficult to shift. With that said, let's crack on.
4.30 now, I got here at nine o'clock. So this is completely at the limits of what one person can achieve in a day. And that's just grafting the whole time. Um, it's come up pretty well though, I'm pleased with it. And uh, it'll certainly give a good first impression for any potential buyers that are coming around to have a look with a view to purchasing the corn mill. Let's just have a quick look around, see how it's turned out. Well, remember the bridge here. Uh, this was really slimy, quite dangerous actually. Now what we've got here, we see this a lot, even though I've pressure washed it off, you can see that we've still got green algae marks here. It shows up better where it's a little damp rather than where it's wet. And this is where you've got live algae that's resident in the wood. It's still alive. So hopefully the post treatment will actually kill that off over the next few days. Onto this uh, terrace here. I've got these really interesting feature with these millstones up onto our sort of harlequin multicolored tiled indian sandstone mini sets <laughs> um looks really nice actually lots of black lichen here which we'll struggle with we can't use any chemicals in this really dark corner here which doesn't get much sunlight we can see it's particularly bad whilst in complete contrast over this corner which will get sunlight for quite a lot of the day there's hardly any then we're up into the little courtyard again this really interesting feature of a, a millstone there yeah it's looking good i can hear the blackbirds <laughs> and up onto the top where we've got the skip well we're gonna have a big black mark underneath there fortunately this place is pretty close to my home so uh, I'll just pop back with a bit of water and get that cleaned off um, pretty quickly so let's talk about this uh, post treatment um, we've got the beck there it goes into the river we've got the otters we've got the fish um, no question at all of putting any harmful chemicals down on this job um, have you done so a lot of these, these stains up here would have been uh, faded away quite a bit we wouldn't have got rid of this particular ones completely because of what I said about that, uh, that particular kind of stone but uh, it would have been much improved all the same so today I'm going to be using a product which I haven't used before it's from Pure Silk Services it's called Safe Clean Eco 100% um, safe and eco friendly leach acid and biocide free safe for pets and children works on all surfaces no hidden harmful ingredients Safe Clean Eco is the safest way to remove algae from your external hard surfaces. Okay, well I've already removed a lot of the algae with the pressure washing, but without a doubt there will be remnants of that left, there will be spores. And then that will come back at some point, we're still in late February, it's got plenty of time to, to re-establish. Um, but hopefully this will just kill off anything that remains and uh, should see it well into next year I would have said uh, in particular I'm hoping that it deals with those slimy uh, boards that are on the bridge I'm going to be putting this down at a dilution of uh, 20 to 1 I'm going to use the speed I'm going to use an X jet to do that um, what I should say also is that it's a trade only product quite expensive that's a concentrate I said we're going to dilute that at 20 to 1 so a 5% solution um, but just this five litre bottle um, is about 70 pounds, it's not cheap. Well, five o'clock on the dots. Skipman's arrived just as I'm ready to leave. Uh, never mind though. Uh, that's been a nice job. I enjoyed that. Um, quick uh, dash up to Menston now. Go see Diana that called me this morning. Give her a quote for a patio. And um, we'll see you on the next job, eh?